How you doing, everybody? Millsup Garage here. I think I'm going to have to speak up. Because I am in the middle of a serious storm. But, uh, did not want the night to come to an end without showing you the uh, conclusion. I went back to the HD GoPro here for this video, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to give any more, like, micro uh, close-up views of it now, because I'm done, and uh, I figure it's only fair to give a view of what this looks like now, the whole gun. Um, I used a stain that did seem to stain the polymer clay, and uh, I think if I featured this rifle and just showed it to you like this, um, I really don't think anybody would notice anything was going on there. Uh, was, you know, so like I said, I can get up close now and show you, you know, exactly what the difference in color or how it looks or that you might see a parting line here or there. But you see from just the view of you looking at the rifle, I don't think anybody would notice that. I think that's a pretty uh, good option. Um, instead of cutting the stock. I actually think for a couple of reasons it's a better option than cutting the stock. Uh, number one, it's the original stock. Um, and don't everybody give me any crap for doing this and putting, you know, using polymer clay to, to make this repair. Giving me any crap about its originality or this and that. I did not butcher this. I did not cut this flat. Um, I didn't ruin it. Um, I inherited it that way, and I think, like a lot of people, might say, "Oh, well, the, the, the butt end of the stock is cut off." They might just find the stock and put it on. I did more to preserve its originality by keeping the original stock because it does have the or the numbers that match the gun and everything. It is the original stock to it, and uh, I wanted to do anything I could do to preserve it and bring it back to the way it was. And uh, if I would have cut even further into this, uh, I, I don't know. I don't think it would have worked out, number one, but it would have definitely been obvious. I think by actually keeping it built back like that and actually building something to mount it to without cutting into the stock any further, um, actually brought it back to very close to its original position, its original length of pull. And uh, it's nice to see a nice, this nice old curved buttstock, buttstock back on here again instead of just that flat piece. Where you see it's that flat line where you see like the, the difference in the color there. And I'll try to find something. It looks like it came out actually a little darker. I might have gotten a uh, stain that was maybe a little too dark. Might actually, if I could color that the same color as this wood, this is kind of like a reddish kind of walnut. You know, if I'd be able to color that the same, then it would really be invisible. The hardest thing now is just to get it colored right, the texture. You know what I did too? I, did, I didn't even mention it in the last video. After sanding it, I realized that by hitting it with a very coarse sandpaper, just, just scuffing it with a coarse sandpaper, took away that very smooth clay-like look to it, you know, and made it look a lot more like the wood so that when it was stained, it did take on a lot, of the, almost the same type of texture. So that was a pretty cool move. But um, now it's just a question of just getting it colored right to really make it uh, virtually invisible but um now it's shoulders the way it should i mean it's just shoulders so much nicer you know i'm digging it so that was the butt plate project and uh interesting note i um i bought four of those uh little squares of sculpey that i showed and um i only used one of them just one of them was actually perfect and i had a little bit left over that i put in a little uh, uh sandwich bag um to keep that soft in case I wanted to do any further touch-ups or anything. And uh, that was just one square of Sculpey. They were like two fifty a pop. So um, I had like seven fifty worth of Sculpey sitting there that I'm like, I know where this stuff is if I need it. What do I need it sitting in the drawer for? Let me go. Uh, I'm going to get this, this, this marker. I actually found the um, stain, the wood stain marker um, at the same place. So I returned the Sculpey and got the marker and when I had first bought the original stuff, the tools, the woodworking tools, the um, the um, sculpting tools and the Sculpey, I had gotten a 50% off your next item coupon. So as 
cheap as this project was, it wasn't even 25 bucks. When I went back and returned the Sculpey and got the uh, marker, the stain marker, I actually got money back. I got about I got about four bucks, five bucks back, actually. So it all like, turned into like a twenty dollar project. So you know, when you have a gun that's not really necessarily worth a lot of money. It's nice to be able to do a project like that where it, it makes sense, like a twenty dollar project on a, you know, two three hundred dollar gun, four hundred dollar gun. It doesn't kill you, you know what I mean? But like a three hundred dollar project on a three hundred dollar gun, that's when it starts to get silly, which is originally why these uh, you know these gunsmiths were walking away. And you know these gunsmiths, they might have done a better job, um, they might have done a more professional job. But uh, there's definitely something to be said for when you do something on your own. Wow. I don't know if I'm going to be here much longer. And uh, it, there's something to be said for it. it. It feels really good to get some ideas, try something. You know, you could fail at it. I, uh, I've had failed a couple of times. The first time putting the Sculpey on. I didn't like the way it looked. I took it all off, did it again. You just be persistent and work slow. I can't emphasize more just how you have to take your time and um, be really slow and methodical about uh, things that you do and uh, you'll have great success. So yeah, so that's it. End of project. Um, I guess the only thing you'll see now is if I post a video where I, uh, you know, where I actually um, fire this thing and, uh, and it shatters, you know, or, uh, you know, I put it down one day and it happens to break. Uh, what's interesting is when, when I cured it, it seems like it could have probably used maybe another 5 or 10 minutes in the oven. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually think that's a good thing. Because it didn't really um, harden like I was chipping it away. You know what I mean? It uh, Even when I was sanding it, it was fouling the sandpaper easily. It was about 75% hardened, and I think that's actually a good thing because it will probably stop it from ever cracking. It's hard enough to hold its shape and be firm, and I can dig a fingernail into it and make a mark on it. But it's not hard enough where if I banged the, the, the butt down on the ground, it would shatter it. You know what I mean? So, um, so I think that worked out perfect as well. It kind of... Uh, kind of 75% hardness seems to be just perfect for the area that that's in because it's an area that takes some abuse and and with the shock from the recoil and everything the harmonics traveling through the stock I can see how it could easily crack it if it was that hardened you know what I'm saying so it being a little softer might give it a little bit of give you know but when I say soft I don't mean soft like it's still clay like because it's not it's just, uh, it's kind of like a soapstone kind of texture, you know? You can dig a screwdriver into it and, and, and make like a divot. Whereas I think if it was really, really hard, it would even be tough to do that. It would be more like stone, you know what I mean? So, uh, thanks for sticking with me through this, uh, this project. Let me know what you think. I mean, let me know if uh, you thought it was going to come out better. If uh, it came out much better than you thought it was going to come out. You don't give a shit. Let me know. You guys have a happy 4th. I'm going to go batten down the hatches here because uh, I think the Millsurf Garage is going to be floating today. Hang in there.